It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to compare and contrast the Gospel of Luke to Socrates. Now, my main sources include this particular book that's been done by Dennis McDonald, The Holy Bible, and this particular series of audiobooks that's been done by Plato about Socrates. And I highly recommend this audiobook since it has like at least 10 different audiobooks into one collection. In the previous episode, I talked about how Paul uses various elements of Socrates and Plato's for his direct quotations. Now, when I was reading this book that was done by Dennis McDonald's, I didn't realize that there's like a lot of elements that are just so similar between Jesus Christ and Socrates. And so without further hesitation, let's compare and contrast the two people. In Luke chapter 23, it says right here, Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposed payments of taxes to Caesar and claims to be a messiah, a king. In this particular context, Jesus Christ is accused of corruption of the youth, and he's also accused of blasphemy. In Plato's Apologies, it says right here, Now, so far as the accusations are concerned, which my first accusers made against me, this is a sufficient defense before you, but against Multilus, the good and patriotic, as he says, and a later one, I will try to defend myself next. So once more, as if these were another set of accusers, let us take up and turn their sworn statement. It's about as follows. It states that Socrates is a wrongdoer because he corrupts the youth and does not believe in the gods the state believe in. In other words, Socrates in this particular context is pretty much accused of blasphemy like with Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 23, it says right here, When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he has been wanting to see him. For when he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He piled him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teacher of the laws were standing there, vehemently accusing him, then Herod and his soldier ridiculed and mock him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is assigning the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Now, Xenopon says right here, in reference to Socrates, I wondered then how the Athenians could be persuaded that Socrates was a free stinker when he never said or did anything contrary to some religions and his utterance about the gods and his behavior towards them were the words and acts of a man who is truly religious and deserved to be thought so. Now in Luke chapter 23 verse 34 it says right here, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they divided up his clothes by using lots. Now it says right here, Socrates, I shall not find any fault with you as I do with others for being angry and cursing me, when at the behest of the authorities I tell them to drink the poison. No, I found you in all this time in every way the most noblest and gentlest best man who ever come here. And now I know your anger is directed against others, not against me. For you know who are to blame. Now for you know the message I came to bring you. Farewell and try to bear what you must. And he burst into tears and turned away. And Socrates looked up at him and said, Fare you well too. I will do as you say. And then he said to us, How charming the man is. Ever since I've been here, he has been coming to see me and talking with me from time to time and has been the best of them and how nobly the weeps for me. But come, Christo, let him obey him and let's bring the poison and if it's ready, if it's not, let the man prepare it. In other words, the ideas of forgiveness are there. Jesus Christ is forgiving those who mock them and want him dead and Socrates is also forgiving a person who also wants them to be dead too. In Luke chapter 23 verse 40 to 43 it says right here, 
But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember when you come in your kingdom? Jesus answered them, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Plato says right here, And though I have been saying at great length that after I drink the poison, I shall no longer be with you, but shall go away to the joys of the blessings you know of. In other words, the same for both of them is the idea that they both have everlasting paradise once they die. In Luke chapter 23 verse 46, it says, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. Now for Socrates it says, I may and must pray to the gods that my departure hence be a fortunate one. So I offer this prayer, and may it be granted. With these words, he raised the cup to his lips and very cheerfully and quietly drained it. Up to that time, most of us have been able to restrain our tears fairly well, but we watched him drinking and saw that he had drunk the poison. He could do so no longer, but in spite of my myself, my tears rolled down in floods, so I wrapped my face in my cloth and weep for myself. It was not for him that I wept. His thighs, and passing upwards this way, he showed us that he was growing cold and rigid, and again he touched him, and said that when it reached his heart, he would be gone. The chill has now reached the region around the groin, and uncovering his face, he has been covered. He said, and these were his last words, We owe a cock to Alapius, pay it and do not let gladed. That, he said, Christo, shall be done, but see if you have anything else to say. For this question he made no reply, but after a little, when he moved, the attendants uncovered him, his eyes were fixed, and Cretho, when he saw it, closed his mouth and eyes. In other words, both Jesus and Socrates have their dying cries before they actually pass away. The Saturian, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. Such was the end, Echocrates of our friend, who was, as we must say, of all those of his time whom we have known, the best and wisest, and the most righteous man. Now keep in mind, the ideas, the philosophies, and the stories about Socrates actually predates Jesus. And so we do know that when it comes down to this particular issue, that the philosophers that were really popular were Aristotle's, were Plato, and it was also Socrates that was really popular during that time period. And so the stories that we hear about Socrates, we cannot necessarily confirm either way if the stuff that he actually would contribute to him or actually the stuff that he actually says. And we cannot necessarily confirm either way what Jesus actually said or done. But I think it's really interesting that there are cross parallels between Socrates and Jesus Christ. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.